So with that, when we look at it, um, I guess initially, um, if you look up here on the, on the actual slide, we can see we have A. That's our mode area for uh, switching between uh, uh, manual hydraulic pressure and auto adjust or, or uh, PFS, which is packing force sensor. Going down into the other main page, B is the actual sensor setting area. Uh, I'll go through it in a little more detail. It gives us options of calibrating our packing force sensor, live pressure readouts, switching it between manual or auto, our, again our quick dump, but you'll, we'll note a percent and we'll show you that. Same as our actual touch screen with target pressures. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go through those in a little more detail here. Then from there, if we look at C, it gives us smart hitch options for turning it on and off. There is no calibrations again through these uh, controls, so it is done actually externally on the machine. From there, if we drop down, we have D, which is the actual wing fold. So initially we have down in the bottom what uh, gives our machine what's called matrix, which gives us left and right uh, ability to lock the left or right sides in the machine while we're unfolding uh, it. So again, it still utilizes inner and outer press and hold switches for the actual uh, control as well as then we have a pressure override, same as the other control. So this one is laid out a, a lot like the actual Seedmaster touch, uh, touch screen and uh, operates very much the same as it. Uh, it does have another option. So down here it has uh, F as the back return. And uh, uh, if any, not sure what it is, is it's returning you back to a main page. With the Cruiser 2, we actually gain the ability of guidance. So if you happen to have a Starfire or something kind of guidance system and they have a tank that doesn't have mapping, so they only have uh, auto steer but no mapping capability, if they've bought a toolbar from you, you have now also do have the option if you go back through here, you do have the ability to set it up and actually do field mapping as well with it. So it's kind of a nice uh, feature that's uh, that comes with uh, the monitor itself. So to actually go through it in a little more detail here, what I have is, uh, again, we'll go through it, is in the very top is the actual packing pressure info. So in the mode uh, we, area, we do have the ability, like I said, to put it in hydraulic, which is just simply reading a pressure transducer for actual hydraulic pressure and operating with our manual hydraulic gauge. Uh, when we check off or touch within the PFS, it then switches it over to the packing force sensor mode, which is the auto adjust packing force sensor. So that at that point, we can switch it to operate uh, auto or manually within the packing force sensor as well. So know that if we're operating hydraulic alone, it's operating in here. If you want to operate it with the packing force sensor, you simply check it off within the packing force sensor area. From there, we have B, calibrate sensors. So what that is, is it's the PFS calibration. So with anything that has a load cell, you have to know where zero is. So it gives us the ability that when you actually lift the openers up on the machine, you're taking all the packing pressure off the packer wheels and uh, at that point we would want to make sure our packing force sensor reads zero. So uh, with the openers up and all the pressure off of that, we then can calibrate it and we do so by touching here on the calibrate sensor and uh, it simply zeroes out the actual load cell that's giving us our readout of true time packing pressure on the seed bed. When that's uh, reading correctly, uh, we can then operate that packing force sensor by over here. So we can simply turn it off, manual or automatic. So typically the main operation of a packing force sensor is to automatically change the hydraulic pressure to maintain a consistent seed bed pack. So that is the overall goal with a packing force sensor is to actually maintain consistent seed bed packing. And uh, so 
We do have the ability to switch it into automatic or manual. And uh, for manual, it's uh, the reason being is uh, if you want it to start to troubleshoot things and to actually operate it and see when you increase or decrease pressure, is it reading out? So at that point, we can actually look down and uh, see right here where it actually has the same options as what we had before. So um, these are kind of gross numbers to work with. Uh, and gross is you can use it either way. It's actually, they're just not true numbers that you'll see. So when we are operating, um, I guess with a hydraulic pressure, it would actually read actually PSI because I said it uses a pressure transducer. Now it'll read pressure. Now typically you're only gonna see from a range from zero to 2000 PSI on there. So an average pressure being closer to 1000 PSI of average pressure. And uh, when we uh, adjust that, we can then see that it's actually changing the PWM setting where on the actual Seedmaster touchscreen, it was percent closed of uh, what the valve was. So it would, uh, you'd seen before it was at 45 and that meant 45% closed on the Seedmaster touchscreen. On this control, it gives us the PWM and what that range is from is from zero to 253. So it's just a mean number. Uh, and at that point, 253, is fully closed so um, so zero is fully open or fully relieved and 253 is fully closed so that PWM as it increases in not in value it'll actually increase the actual pressure so PSI is red when you're in the actual hydraulic mode now get, going back to the actual packing force uh, we know that we can zero it by lifting the openers up, touching the area, we can zero that pressure out, and then we can then uh, operate it in either the manual or automatic. And when we look here, uh, when we're operating with PFS, it actually reads uh, libs, so palms. And um, so the actual will be whatever it is packing in actual pounds. So, um, at that point, the PWM value will still operate exactly the same, but uh, I want you to make sure you know that it's, it can operate in the hydraulic mode with PSI or operate in the packing force sensor with actual pounds. So when we uh, go to set up to operate it, we go to D, which is uh, down here. So again, same initial setup as before, target, uh, target pressure, so you can touch it in there and change your value of what you want and um, with that this one's set up to be 150 so that's 100 if we're in the packing for a sensor it's going to be 150 pounds and that's what it's going to target now if we're in the hydraulic pressure it's going to be set to 150 psi which to an average pressure is more up around a thousand so know that it switches between those modes because the, the mode setting is initially up here. So from there, uh, when we have set up for target pressure, when we're operating in an automatic mode, the actual is always going to achieve this target pressure. So you set the target pressure and the actual is always gonna be trying to maintain that. And uh, you'll see that that PWM value is increasing and decreasing. So as it becomes a harder area, it may have more draft on the fertilizer knife, which is taking away from the packing pressure. So then you'll see the PWM value uh, start to increase to maintain the actual pressure the same as the target pressure. If we wanted to make sure things are reading right, we simply can lock it into a manual mode and then manually, uh, it, it won't automatically change pressure. It's set to that one and it, it stays there. The part of why we want that is that if we want to start to f actually troubleshoot how it's operating, the easiest way to actually check it is by putting it into the actual manual mode and then uh, uh, changing our target pressure and then 
re-entering new target pressures to see if it changes to it. So that's part of why we want the manual molded. And uh, as we increase uh, uh, pressure, we want to make sure that uh, our readouts are corresponding. So uh, if we increase the pressure, does the actual change, right? So, and uh, so for instance, if we happen to have a load cell on the packing force sensor installed upside down, as you increase the, the actual pressure in pounds, you see that your actual starts to decrease. It gives you a sign that when you're operating in the manual mode that maybe the load cell's upside down and uh, you know, when it was added on, uh, it's then it was installed upside down and it's a baseline to actually troubleshoot to make sure that when you increase the pressure, the actual display pressure increases as well because if not, if it doesn't operate like that, then when you have it in the automatic mode, it, will, it won't be correcting it properly. It's always going to be doing a reverse function. So from there, quick dump. Now on the other control box, we just simply had relief. Now when we look at this one, it has percent. Now this is where I want to make sure everyone kind of gets the understanding. So if you actually look on page 15 of the, the manual, the example for this is uh, if the target pressure is set to 100 pounds, so initially this one's set to 150 on the screen, if we set it to 100 pounds, the quick dump override percent is set to 10%, which it is right now on the screen, uh, <coughs> and the override switches switch to the override position, so active, it will drop the target pressure to 10 pounds. So I just want to make sure everyone understands it's not going to drop it by 10 pounds, it's going to drop it to the 10 pounds, right? So it's, uh, it's only going to maintain 10% of what it originally had. So if you went to 50%, it's uh, going to be 50 pounds and 100% it wouldn't simply wouldn't drop at all. So um, now that does activate again with the actual pressure override switch. So um, that is something that we wanted to incorporate because as we get uh, different field conditions, stuff like that, customers will know that, oh, if I back off to about half the packing pressure I had, I can come off that uh, hill and go through the low spot, put the packing pressure in half and seed through it and then uh, turn it right back to where I want it for the rest of the field. So that's why having the percent in there was uh, critical and why we wanted to make sure it was uh, an available option. So, so carrying on down through the actual screen here, E is smart hitch. Simply when you turn it on, the smart hitch will be on. You turn it off, the smart hitch will be off. There is no calibration uh, that is done within the actual cruiser to monitor. So uh, it will be done external and I'll show you guys that uh, after lunch. Wing fold options. So down here, F. Um, this is, uh, gives us left and right wing lock. So when you uh, activate this here, it'll actually light up uh, as an X. And uh, what that means, if you activate left wing lock, it's locking that wing from going down. Uh, if you right, activate right, it'll, act, it'll stop the right wing from going down. So um, the option was put in place I guess one for your, if you're pulling it into uh, a yard and you only want to unfold half the machine and uh, it takes quite a while to unfold the whole machine and maybe you don't have the room, things like that. So uh, initially it was set up to do that and uh, the, what it's dubbed is called matrix fold. And uh, the other reason was uh, with higher machines you want to unfold for a low po power line or something and you only wanted to do a partial fold. That's the other reason that it is in place for which it's something that I want to caution anyone if you are starting to do that to make sure you do know line height if you have a large machine like that. So um, I do like more the option of being able to lock it so you can unfold part of the machine for in the yard and stuff. So every machine 2014 going out does have what's called matrix fold which simply is left and right wing locks and uh, so we understand that you activate left, it stops the left side from going down. You activate right, it stops the right side from going down. Yes, you can actually activate both. So 
Uh, we do have some uh, dealerships that for doors or something, the building isn't, the door is lots wide enough, uh, but not quite high enough. So they'll actually unfold it part way to get it out of the actual machine door. And then uh, with that, it has both locks. And what it's actually doing is locking the return oil so that it can't return out of the wing. So I'll show you that uh, just before lunch here. So those can be activated when you're going into actual fold here. So if you're unfolding your inner uh, wings or outer wings, you can simply stop that side from unfolding further with uh, locking the left or right side. So again, these are press and hold. So inner main wings first and then outer wings second. Uh, H is uh, again that pressure override, which when you press it, it will then uh, dump it back to whatever percent is entered in there for a value. So uh, when you uh, press it, it does actually uh, throw up uh, an orange thing on the screen showing that it is active. And when you shut it off, it does show that it's off. So now there is a guidance system so that you can utilize uh, if someone uh, has purchased an actual toolbar. If we uh, go back to the main screen, you can set it up for uh, for actual mapping so it'll paint the screen just like any other field map and uh, when it's activated it's uh, it'll show your actual machine and where it's gone and so on just the same as every other field map so on the actual cruiser monitor to actually turn the actual uh, opener pressure switch on and off we have an actual foot pedal switch. So with the cruiser monitor, it is now a foot pedal switch. So with that, in, if you set up your field mapping, it'll turn the opener pressure switch on as well as it will also uh, uh, start your field mapping. So uh, that is how it actually operates. So 